Hi, everybody, and um, happy Sunday. I am back with some Mother of the Bride hair talk. Yeah, um, Una's wedding was freaking amazing. I spent Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, almost six days in Cincinnati helping to prepare for um, the little touches for my daughter's wedding. And um, there were ups and downs between mommy and daughter, but everything was spectacular. It was wonderful seeing old friends. It was wonderful seeing family and reconnecting with a lot of people. Um, we had a lot of fun activities and I will be doing a slideshow. I have quite a few photographs on my phone. Um, currently I'm working on blog posts leading up to the wedding. I'm going to link the blog posts that I have, but if you watch this video and if you read the blog posts that I'm going to link below, be aware that later on today, I'm going to be linking the blog post to the rehearsal dinner and possibly Tuesday, I will be uploading the blog post about the wedding. Um, I just, I cannot believe that it went so quickly. Like, it's a blur. And if it's a blur to me as the mother of the bride, I'm sure to my daughter, it's even more of a blur because honest to God, I don't even remember speaking with her that much at the reception. At the reception, we were dancing so much that it was completely insane. Like when I say insane, I mean insane. I liked the way everything fell into place at the reception. And I have to give kudos to Una and Sam for that and to their um, event coordinator. What happened was as soon as after the cocktail hour, which I'm so upset that I missed Getta fritters because I was dying to try Getta fritters. And um, we were so busy taking photographs with the photographer that the only thing that I had was shrimp cocktail. Well, not even shrimp cocktail, it was like shrimp. And I made sure that I had a whole plate full of shrimp. And, you know, the beverages were free flowing. Um, Everything was just great, but the turn of events at the reception after the cocktail hour were that we sat down right away to eat our meal. And then after that, the DJ had every single person, with the exception of my husband, who just sat down and said, oh, you know, I do not like to dance. So I just watch you because I watch you dance and you are uh, very entertaining on the dance floor. So he watches while I dance. Um, it, it was crazy. Now, be warned. My family loves to dance. When we are at an event and we are on the dance floor, watch out because from start to finish, my family will be on the dance floor. And that's how it went down. We were on the dance floor practically the entire time with maybe one or two breaks for a beverage or to stop and chat with somebody for a couple of minutes. Um, so yeah, it was just, it was so great. Like it was really great. I have tremendous guilt feelings because I couldn't afford to pay for her wedding, but the flip side of that is that my daughter has a really great career and so does her husband. So does my son-in-law. I can't believe it. Now I have one more child, my son-in-law. Um, 
So they were both able to give the people a joyous celebration and one that was well worth it. Um, so what I'm going to talk about in between the events that led up to the wedding was the hair that I took with me. And I, ha you know what? I'm going to stop it right here to tell any woman, whether you have a full freaking head of bio hair or whether your bio hair has thinned or whether you have no bio hair at all. If you have a special event to go to, or if you are traveling, you're on vacation, you're the mother of the bride or the mother of the groom, get a freaking wig because it saves so much time. Anyway, on this special trip, three wigs came with me. One of the wigs and the wig that I wore at the wedding was Aesthetica's Alden, which I am going to show you how it looks on me. The other was Aesthetica's Avalon, and there's a reason for this, and I'm going to tell you about it. And the wig that I have on now is the wig that I traveled with. This is Enchantress, and Enchantress is by main attraction. Out of all three wigs, this one is the most um, purse friendly. And let me tell you something, this freaking wig was unbelievable. Boy, did she perform well. Now, I wore her to the airport. I wore her did I wear her the day I got, yeah, I wore her when I got spray tanned. I wore her to the Cincinnati Reds game. I'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, this is what I wore to the airport. Now, if you know me, you know that I like to get to airports early because I have a high anxiety, um, like a high anxiety, I have a level of high anxiety. And my tolerance and stress level is very low. So when I get to an airport, I do not want to waste time at the TSA. It really makes me nervous. Not because I'm, not because there's anything that I need to hide. Um, they can look at every crevice in my body if they want. I don't even care about that. My thing is the timeliness. If there's a long line, and trust me, I've been on TSA lines for an hour. I stress that something's going to happen and I'm going to miss my flight and then there's going to be this and then there's going to be that and then I'm not going to be able to find a flight and then I'm going to be stranded at the airport and this and that and this and that and well you know how it goes down. Anyway I was fortunate enough to arrive at the airport at Philadelphia early and since it was a Tuesday afternoon late in the afternoon around 4 30 ish 5 there was nobody at the airport. Needless to say, I got through TSA, no problem. So I had a little while to wait simply because my flight was until like 8.30 at night. So I roamed the airport, stuffed my face with peanut M&Ms and Philadelphia pretzels, played Candy Crush Saga, and then maybe about an hour before the flight, I got really bored and I realized that I had my wig, my Avalon wig in a plastic bag. Now, since I had this one on, I didn't need to store it. Alden was at the bottom of my carry-on. And yeah, I think I mentioned it before. I put everything into this carry-on, everything. My rehearsal dinner dress, my mother of the bride dress, all the makeup that I had, everything was in here. So clothing from basically since I flew, I arrived Tuesday night. So basically Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, all my clothes were in here. Okay. So things were cramped. And since I was so inclined to be concerned about my wig, I did have Avalon in this bag. I took the air out 
so she was flat. Now, since I was kind of bored, I took her out of my carry-on, took the netting off, shook her out, hung her up like this over my hand, and proceeded to gently comb her out. Yeah, I did this at the airport while I was waiting for my flight. And some of the airport workers were very entertained and thought it was kind of cool that I took my hair out and combed it. I got some odd looks from other people who were waiting, but to tell you the truth, I didn't care because if this is the most that I have to do with a head of hair, then you know what, suckers? I'm ahead of you. So that's it. Now, let me tell you more about this wig. We went Thursday night, we went to a Cincinnati Reds game. Thursday morning, Una and I had spray tan. And you know, they tell you that you have to kind of um, wait a good six to eight hours before taking a shower when you have a spray tan because you don't want to, um, excuse me, you don't want to wash any of that tan off. So the fact that my daughter is very compliant, she jumped in the shower six hours around like maybe seven hours after she had the spray tan. I didn't, I just let my tan be because I figured, you know what, I'm too lazy, so I'll just take a shower in the morning. Anyway, we got to the game. When I tell you the weather was so hot, like it was so hot, I didn't even need to take a shower because I was soaked from the heat and the humidity. I'm telling you, how hot was it? The next morning when I went to take a shower, there was algae like between my butt cheeks from the swampiness that acquired there from all the sweat. That's how hot it was. But this wig, my head never overheated. This wig stayed comfortable and she ended up performing beautifully. All I had to do when I got back to the house was to just like shake her out and comb her. And by the way, if you are considering buying a wig, I don't care what brand the wig is, but one thing that you must get is this comb by John Renault. I received one from, I think it's, be yeah, Best Wig Outlet sent me one as a little gift with a wig that I reviewed for them. So this was my first kind of like effort with this comb and it was so good that I found three more of them, like a pack of three more for $9 from Amazon. So I pulled the trigger and I purchased three more. I now have four of these and they are in my purses. These combs are redonkulously amazing. So whatever wig brand you're buying, make sure you try to get your hands on one of these combs because they are phenomenal. So anyway, the next day was the rehearsal dinner. What wig did I wear? Well, I wore Avalon. And you know what? I'm not even going to like pause. I'm just going to change these wigs on in front of you because why not? Let me just adjust this. Now I have to tell you, I also wore Avalon. I wore Avalon all day Friday into the rehearsal dinner because like nothing had to be done. She's a great, great wig. I also wore her Wednesday when I was 
doing the laundry and helping to like put stickers on little bags for the cookies that Una and Sam gave to wedding guests as a little extra on their way out of the wedding. And while I was doing placemats. So I had this on all day Wednesday. We went out to dinner Wednesday night. I wore Avalon. Um, as I said on Thursday, I wore Enchantress. Why is that word so hard for me to say? Enchantress by Main Attraction. And I'm telling you, this is a freaking stellar wig. But back to Avalon. She suited me so well for just being home at Una and Sam's and doing errands, going out to dinner. I mean, all day Friday, I wore this while we were running errands for the wedding and I didn't even change into another wig. This was on me through the rehearsal, through the rehearsal dinner, um, through the after rehearsal dinner party at the meet and greet for all the out of town guests. Um, let me say, I had a wild time because I was drinking bourbon sours and random glasses of wine. So I was feeling no pain by the time the night was over and this wig still managed to look fabulous. So this is Avalon. She travels so well. I was able to suck the air out of this, throw her in. She was in the suitcase or the carry-on for a long time and she still looks like a million dollars. This is so much better than bio hair. I can't get my hair to look like this. And the time that it saved, if I wasn't wearing wigs, it would take me like two hours to do my bio hair. But not only that, the weather was so hot and humid that my hair would have been like Brillo. I mean, at the game, after the game, the stadium people would have come up to me thinking that I was a human mop. They would have turned me upside down and started mopping the, um, like the stadium with me. That's how bad my bio hair is. But with wigs, it's like, Plop it on, go. No time spent. Don't have to worry about like conditioning my hair. Don't have to worry about anything. Shower, let it air dry, blow dry it, put it back, wig cap on, boom, we're gone. And I'm telling you, when the weather gets that hot, the wig doesn't matter. The wig made me no more hotter than I was. So this is what I wore to the rehearsal dinner. Now I will show you my mother of the bride hair, which I'm sure I showed you in another video. So just for ha ha, I'm gonna turn this inside out. I'm gonna put the netting back on. And I'm going to stick her back into the plastic bag. In fact, I'm thinking maybe this is how I should store my wigs to have more room and more space in my wig closet. All I have to do is just label the bag. So I'm going to take all the air out like so. And then put her aside for now. Now, Alden is the hair that I wore for the wedding. I was going to wear her in an updo, but to tell you the truth, between the hair stylist and the makeup artist, we started at 8.30 in the morning for hair and makeup. And I think there were eight girls that were getting makeup and hair done, and, my, and me, and, and my daughter. So starting at 8.30, with the wedding starting at 6, it took a long time to get hair and makeup done. So I opted to not do an updo 
and wore this wig down. And you know what? I'm glad I did because I received a ton of compliments. Let me fix this wig cap. Okay, there we go. So let me take my glasses off. Put Baldwin on. Adjust the ear tab. Put my glasses back on. It is hard to do this in front of a computer camera or my laptop camera, whatever you want to call it. And here we go. Julia Roberts hair. I got so many compliments on my hair for the wedding. I mean, seriously, I had co-workers of my daughter coming up to me saying, you, mother of bride goals. So basically that made my day. Here we go. And I can't wait to see how the professional photographs turned out. And you know what? I'm really thankful that I did wear her down because with the amount of dancing that we did, um, I honestly think that if I wore her in a nupdu, she would have fallen down anyway. But the place was so beautifully air conditioned that I was cool as a cucumber. And with all the dancing that I did, I didn't sweat as much as I did when I was at the Reds game. Um, for the dress that I wore, I don't remember if I showcased it in my Mother of the Bride um, dress video when I went to try dresses on. I may have. I'll put a link down to it. Um, I went with the long Calvin Klein black dress. And it looked really great. I got so many compliments on it. I think it was a great choice because there was nothing fancy about the dress. It was very basic and simple and all eyes were on my daughter. So that's it. When the professional photographs come out, I'll be doing a blog post and I'll announce that blog post because personally for me, it's so much easier because I'm not good at, um, inserting photos or anything. Basically, I suck at editing. So I think the best choice for me is as the good photographs come in to do a blog post about it and then tell you guys about it. Put the links to the blogs in so you can go over, head over there and read, have a glass of wine, have a cup of coffee, have a bourbon sour, and just enjoy the read. Um, there was a lot going on. And I can tell you that if you are a future mother of the bride, if you are a mother of the bride now and you have a daughter that's getting married soon, um, I made a couple of mistakes. And those mistakes that I made were my big mouth. I think if you're a mother of the bride, you have to take a step back from any opinion that you have and do not voice your opinion. And I'm not saying this in a snarky way. I'm not, I'm just saying this in this, this is what it is. The bride is under a lot of stress. And even those brides that are cool, calm, and collective, a few days before the wedding, they're going to feel stress about a lot of things. And the best thing that you can do as the mother of the bride is to just stop, listen, and shake your head. Don't give an opinion. Don't offer suggestions. Don't say anything that will ruffle her feathers. Because if you do, it's not going to be... Um, 
it's not going to be a happy scene for a couple of moments. There could be some arguing. So that's my advice. In hindsight, I shouldn't have given my opinion on anything. And I wasn't even opining in a critical way. Um, I'm just an annoying person. If you know me, you know that I'm pretty annoying and I don't mean to be annoying. It's just the way I am. I can come off as just annoying. A lot of us are annoying to people at some times. So that's basically it. But the end result was great. We all had a great time. My daughter is a gem. My son-in-law is a gem. The both of them make a great team and a wonderful couple. She has married into such a great family. I'm not kidding you. This was Northeast meets Midwest. And his Midwest family is so welcoming and so nice and so much fun. So I feel really good about the fact that my daughter has been welcomed into a great family. And moving forward, I just hope that I can be the best mother-in-law ever. Um, I know I'm not the most nurturing person. Um, I'm pretty self-centered, but there's reasons for that that I'm not going to delve into. Um, but I am making a concerted effort to be a better person. And I honestly want to be a great mother-in-law, which also means no opinions. So that's it. That is my wedding hair, my mother of the bride hair. And honestly, I swear to you, get a wig. Wigs are so much easier to deal with than bio hair. Unless your bio hair is perfect. Like my older son has a girlfriend who has perfect bio hair. She's that girl who can jump into the shower and go, and her hair is perfect like five minutes later. Unless you have hair like that, which most of us don't, my firm suggestion is to get a wig. Although I have to say my daughter Una has pretty much perfect hair. Her hair dries really well. It doesn't frizz. The color of her hair is really nice. It's thick. Yeah, come to think of it, her hair is pretty much perfect too. But if you don't have perfect hair, a wig is perfect. So that's it. I know I took a lot of your time up and I'm sorry. And if I'm annoying, that's just the way I am. I'm going to try not to be. So where is my mouse? That's it. Take care and have a fabulous, fabulous day. The links to my blog posts that I have up already are below. Take care. I will see you later.